Hello everyone and thank you for joining with me this morning and for tuning in and we're very grateful to have you along this morning. Now as we've come each morning to the kitchen table for some thoughts that's made me think of some tables that we read of in the Bible and there are some tables in the Bible and they have a great message for us and as we look at those tables and the activities that took place around those tables we can learn some great lessons. So I'd like us to turn this morning first of all and read of the first table this morning and that's found in 2 Kings chapter 4. So if you'd like to turn with me in your Bible this morning to 2 Kings and chapter 4. And we read there in 2 Kings chapter 4 beginning at verse number 8. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day when he came thither, and he turned in to the chamber, and lay there. Now here's this uh, great woman of Shunem, and we're not told her name, but we believe that she was a wealthy woman, and a woman of some substance. And here, this woman has made provision for the prophet Elisha. And I like to call Elisha the, the ploughboy become prophet. Because you'll remember that whenever Elijah came to, to call Elisha to be the prophet, uh, and that God had called him, that Elisha was just, he was simply ploughing with the oxen. He, he wasn't anyone special. And he hadn't uh, uh, achieved any great uh, uh, so, social status in life. He was just simply a ploughboy, as I would say. But now he's been called to be this great man of God. And Elisha here is passing by this Shunammite woman's house on a regular basis, going about his work for God, going about his ministry as a prophet to Israel. And this great woman of Elisha, she has saw the work and saw his walk before God. And it's, she says there to her husband, Behold now I perceive that this is an holy man of God. She has saw the work that, that Elisha is doing. She saw that how he be behaves and how he conducts himself. And that has spoken to this woman. And now she makes this little chamber onto the side of their house as it were. And it's just somewhere for Elisha to, to rest when he's passing by. And we read there that she puts in there. Uh, that she set there for him a bed, a table and a stool. And a candlestick. And you know this table here. I just simply wrote, wrote here at the side of this here. That this is a table of witness and testimony. Because Elisha's witness and testimony for God. Has spoken to this woman. And you know whenever I think about that. And how that woman viewed Elisha. Uh, uh, and how she was seeing how he was conducting himself. You know there are many out there in the world today. And they're viewing you and I. And they see how you behave and how I behave and how we conduct ourselves. And you know, we are, a, we are a, a walking testimony for God. And how others perceive us and how they read us, we're just like an open book. Uh, and they're reading our lives just daily as we go about our work. And so we have to be faithful in our witness and testimony for the Lord. And I wonder, whenever others look at us throughout the day, could they say that we were just like Elisha? That we are a holy man or a holy woman of God. I, I hope and pray that today that you and I can behave in such a way as Elisha did. This ploughboy become prophet. That we can behave like him. And that it would speak to others uh, of their great need of salvation. And that they too would come and put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. The, the, the second table that I want us to look at this morning is found in 1 Corinthians and chapter 10. So if you'd like to turn with me. To 1 Corinthians and chapter 10. 1 Corinthians and chapter 10 this morning. And we begin reading there at verse number 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 21. And the Apostle Paul says to the Christians there at Corinth. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord. 
and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. And then if you turn over to the next chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and just reading those well-known words beginning there at verse number 24. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death, till he come. The Apostle Paul here is speaking, of course, of the Lord's table. And it's great, you know, that we can come each Sabbath day to the Lord's table after our service and remember the great finished work of the Lord Jesus upon the cross. And of course, this table here, I simply wrote here over this table, a table of remembrance. Because of, as we come to this table, we're simply remembering that finished work of the Lord Jesus upon the cross. And we're remembering that through him giving his life for us, we have eternal life. We have a, a life that is going to go on forever. Even though we die, we will live eternally in the presence of God in heaven. And we have that great assurance that because we put our faith and trust in that finished work, that substitutionary death where the Lord Jesus died on our behalf and took our place, that we have eternal life and that we have that assurance of sins forgiven and the assurance of a home in heaven. So that's the table of remembrance and as we come to it each Sunday. Now, we've, caught, we've looked at two tables. We've looked at the table, as I have called it, a table of witness and testimony. That was the table that Elisha came to. And then here we have the table of remembrance. But this morning, I'd like us to look at the third and final table. And it's found just there in, in Luke in chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. And I call this table a table of warning. A table of warning. And we read there in Luke chapter 16, beginning at verse 19. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. And seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented. In this flame. This here table is what I've called the table of warning. And it's a warning to you this morning. If you're unsaved and you haven't put your trust in the finished work of the Lord Jesus this morning. This here biblical account that the Lord Jesus tells us of. Uh, some people believe this was a parable. But we know that it's not a parable. Because the Lord Jesus says there in verse 19. There was a certain rich man. This man lived and he died. This man lived and this man was a rich man. And if this man were around today, he would have the fancy cars and the fancy house. He would have, have the lovely, lovely holidays. He would have the lovely clothes. And he was a man of great wealth. But you know, he had great substance here on earth. But he had nothing laid up for eternity. He hadn't that treasure laid up in heaven that, that rust and moth doesn't devour. That riches that last forever. And you see there, there was Lazarus. And he desired to be fed of the rich man's table. He was a poor man. But he was rich as far as the things of eternity are concerned. Because we read that Lazarus died. And that he was carried away to Abraham's bosom. He is now in heaven. But this other man, the rich man. He lifted his eyes being in torments. He lifted his eyes in hell. And friends, we don't know how long he was there. Whenever the Lord Jesus told this story 2,000 years ago. He could have been there for many years before that. But all we know is today is that he's still there. And you know friends, this table here is a table of warning for you if you're an unbeliever. And it's telling you this morning that you don't want to be going to this place of torment where the rich man was. 
This rich man that sat at a, at a table every day and fared sumptuously. He had everything that this world has to offer. But you know, it was all of no avail when the time to leave this scene of time came. You know, all those things that he had acquired, they were of no use uh, as far as eternity was concerned. So I'd ask you this morning to make sure that not to be putting your faith and trust in the things that this world has to offer. Should it be sport or should it be your car or your money or whatever, but to put, put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus, the one who can keep you for all eternity. So friends, as we've looked at these tables this morning, I hope this has been a blessing to you. And I hope this morning that as we have thought about Elisha and his table, and I called it the table of witness and testimony, I hope if you're a brother and sister in Christ this morning, that you and I today will have a faithful witness and testimony for God, that maybe we'll speak to some dear unsaved person today, and that they will see their great need. And you know, if we, think, if we have thought about the Lord's table, the table of remembrance, and just think about how the Lord has made that great provision for us at the place called Calvary, and what a blessing it is to be able to remember his substitutionary death for us. But if you're not a believer this morning, and you don't know the Lord Jesus as your own and personal Saviour, can I just ask you again to read the words here that we find in Luke chapter 16, and we read of the rich man who fared sumptuously at a table every day, but today he's in hell. And I would just urge you this morning to make sure that you're not going to be um, in that awful place called hell where he is, but that you will seek the Lord Jesus today and come to know him whom to know is life eternal, and that one day you will have a home in heaven. So friends, I hope that's been a blessing to you this morning. It's been a blessing to me. And as the day lies before us, I'd just like to come to the Lord and just commit the day to him and ask his blessing upon us. So let's pray. Our gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your great provision, uh, that great way of salvation that was wrought for us at the place called Calvary. We're thankful, Heavenly Father, for that finished work. Heavenly Father, we're thankful that the Lord Jesus cried out upon the cross, it is finished, and that we have nothing to do but simply to come and put our faith and trust in him. And Heavenly Father, I just pray today, Lord, that you would keep your hand upon us and keep us safe. And Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us to have a faithful witness and testimony for you today, that those unsaved family and friends that will see us would see something different about us, and that they too could say, as the Shunammite woman said about Elisha, that we are a holy man or a holy woman of God. And Heavenly Father, I do pray for our unsaved family and friends, that today they would hear that still small voice of God. Heavenly Father, we do pray that thy Holy Spirit would do that work that only he can do and make sinners see their great need of salvation, that today would be a day of great revival, a great day of spiritual awakening for some dear man or woman, boy or girl that we know, that we would hear great news of someone coming and putting their faith and trust in the finished work of the Lord Jesus. So Heavenly Father, just continue with us. Bless us and undertake for us, for we ask it all with thanksgiving in the precious name of thy Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. And amen. So friends, thank you for joining with me this morning and I look forward to seeing you very soon. God bless.